All right, we're at Lagunitas Brewing Company in Petaluma. We're gonna be brewing some hop water today and talking with their rock star team in their brew lab. Uh, we're gonna tell you how to make hop water, all the secrets and tips that you need to make amazing hop water at home. Check it out. Hop water is like not an original, you know, new thing. But we were really looking for a, 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 an alcohol platform to infuse with, with cannabis. When we first developed Hoppy Refresher years ago, we tried a bunch of different hops and it's surprisingly, some of them were really not good. It's a re relief to see that there's still home brewers because, you know, brewers have lost their way. We, we, <laughs> We're at Lagunitas. I'm sitting with Jeremy, Mark, and Brian. Let's do some introductions. Tell us a little bit about your, your brewing history and your background uh, here at Lagunitas. Well, my name's Jeremy Marshall, uh, brewmaster, brew monster. Although I'd like to say nobody really ever masters this, especially like when you end up covered with yeast and hops, you're humble. Uh, and then you smell even worse. But I've been, I've worked here for 20 years. Uh, I've seen the brewery grow a lot. It feels like I've worked at a lot of different uh, breweries. Graduated UC Davis uh, two, 2003. And uh, yeah, you give the other guys a chance to talk. Uh, Mark Hughes, a specialty brewing manager, my title. I've been here 15 years. Uh, so I was UC Davis 2008. Um, my, my first uh, kind of uh, pursuit was in music, music production and more creative and then I uh, studied science to go into biochemistry, biotech, and that was all fun and, and interesting, mm -hmm. but you can use the same equipment to brew beer. And I had done an internship in both uh, industries and w came back, uh, you know, actually went to more beer uh, like, a, like a maniac for a couple years, uh, trying to brew as much as I could. Had the dream, you know, to be a brewer. And then uh, at one point, I just uh, Googled, uh, uh, br you know, brewing school. And that's when, uh, when uh, that's Dave, how you uh, Davis. UC Davis came <laughs> and I had had experience in science. So next thing I knew, I was, I was uh, graduating and uh, somebody had just lost a job here. <laughs> so that back then, that's how you were the only way to get a job. And so I was lucky enough uh, uh, to be uh, here for living years. the dream. Yeah. Brian Donaldson, uh, Brewing Innovation Manager. All these titles are very similar and we do similar things. Uh, I've been here about 10 years off and on and been through all through quality, ran sensory for a while before I got in with these guys. And we do all the new product development. I also went to UC Davis, but while they were trained to be brewers, I was trained to be a nerd. I had a master's in food science, uh, but I did study with Charlie Bamforth during that time. Um, and really have learned on the fly how to actually be a brewer. Uh, well, mostly while here, and somehow we get by. Awesome, well thanks for having us guys. All right, let's jump in. So we made hop water today. Tell, tell us a little bit about the history of hop water um, and, and one of your other products, I love the, the Hi-Fi. So the Germans have been taking hops and doing things uh, alternative like hop sodas and hop waters for a long time. And then during prohibition, you know, all of a sudden, you have this thing that only has one application, beer, and, and you had to explore other things. And then we, we feel like hop water is like not an original, you know, new thing. You brewed a beer, you forgot the malt. But we were really looking for a, 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 an alcohol platform to infuse with, with cannabis. So uh, you, this was 2017, Brian did all the extractions. And the cannabis emulsion does bring over a flavor and a certain bitterness of its own. So we had to kind of reverse engineer what the process would be for Hi-Fi Hops, uh, which is you know, still in existence uh, today. Um, it, it kind of lives within California because of federal legality. You know, we're playing within the, the state uh, rec market. And then uh, Hoppy Refresher kind of butted out of that. And then what didn't really know, am I, am I on the non-alcoholic beer space, which was pretty nascent in 2017, or am, am I a mixer? Am I a water? 
uh, distributors weren't, didn't really know what to do with it. And it just kind of lived on its own. And then the pandemic really brought about like a kind of a better for you uh, health consciousness. You know, everyone was thinking about, you know, health in a new way. And it kind of uh, exploded to the point that, you know, now lots of people are, are, are doing them. And, you know, we're, we're, we're happy to see uh, any, any, any home for hops is a happy outcome for, for brewers like us. So. Yeah, certainly it was something that we did just on a, we joked about. Yeah, we did. We, yeah. we, we did. We used dry to joke water. that uh, when I first started working here, we said, wow, they dry hop every single beer they make, even the Pilsner and the Stout. Uh, do, they, do you guys also dry hop your malt silo and your yeast brinks? And, and it turns out that dry hopping your yeast tank is kind of has an interesting tie into the New England thing, like, like hopping yeast and, and active yeast. And it really was like, like Mark says, everything we joke about, just give it some time. <laughs> We're still waiting for a, a barrel aged water. Barrel aged yeah. water. <laughs> we are waiting on barrel aged water. <laughs> But, it's someone uh, we, business opportunity. We, we, we had joked about it, and then uh, there was one company that uh, had uh, out there that had decided to, to commercialize, and we tried it, and it just tasted like just like extract. And ba back then, you know, the extracts were, weren't as good as they are now. And it's thanks to the, like, the fusion of the cannabis industry and really the pressures of things like hop water that the extracts are getting a lot better. But we, it was another one of those things. We had it. We're like, what the hell? Yeah. We could do better than this. And, and, and that's where literally dry, it, dry hopped a tank and, and kind of took it from there. Realized that we had to refine it and did lots of little bench tops and things like that. And your utilization yeah. is very poor. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it's good for hop farmers. <laughs> so let's talk about hop water. Um, let's start with the water. Um, you know, what we do with the water, uh, we pre-boiled it. Let's talk a little bit about that. Acidification, like all the different, we added some calcium uh, chloride as well. Tell me about the water. I guess it's kind of the biggest part of, of hop water, right? We just made some assumptions that uh, a little bit of minerals is good for, for hop water in the same sense that it's good for beer. Uh, it doesn't mean that we're right. We were looking between calci calcium chloride and gypsum, which is calcium sulfate. We weren't trying to accentuate uh, the, the bitterness here. Sulfate kind of takes the hop bitterness and sharpens it, if you will. So we went with the chloride route, which is more mellow, smooth. We went very, very uh, low. I think if, if you did a analysis, we'd be between 50 and 100 parts per million in the, in the finished product. Um, or, you know, that's est estimate. Uh, we did add a uh, food grade acid under the assumption that uh, hop utilization uh, decreases with a lower pH. So this is all like letting the, the science take over um, and, and, uh, and kind of working backwards from how we envision uh, the, the product. But, you know, hop wise, Mark very much uh, took the lead on this uh, project and some of the more interesting things that you may have noticed that we did today. So yeah, let's talk, uh, so we, we boiled our water uh, and, and why did we do that, Mark? Uh, well, certainly to, to sterilize it. Sterilize it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's one of the most important uh, things making this product is it's not gonna be as protected as beer. Uh, and certainly, you know, we all know that, you know, having good water is a, is a good idea, but, uh, also to, to get a little bit of BU in there, which will, and, which will uh, by boiling it, we're also driving off any oxygen, right, in, in there? Yeah, uh, yeah, you, you're yep. mostly deaerating it, whereas, you know, yeah, here at the brewery, we have just giant tanks of deaerated water that we can access, uh, you know, sterile, you know, clean deaerated water. Um, you know, if the home brewer, it'd be more of a challenge. But. So we, you know, we boiled the water, we added the lactic acid um, before we added the hops. Um, and uh, let's just talk about that, why we, we added the acid prior to the hops. That was mostly in the testing the theory that we're not gonna isomerize as much of the alpha and not uh, get too much bitterness. So we're really trying to, to favor, um, there's, there's so many different ways you can make a hop water. And now everyone's trying to sell a, 
an extract or a, a terpene kit or you know just add this and we we do feel that the you know the hop pellets are contributing tannins and polyphenols some texture to the mouthfeel that we take for granted in our beer so you know boiling uh, the hops gives you some some tannins but we don't just want like like bitter soup you know we so getting the pH uh, drop down a little bit tends to not favor isomerization and that lets us focus on the, the, the aromatics. It's all about the, the flavor and the aroma, right? Um, and back to Mark's point about sterilization, I don't, don't want to imply that hops have bacteria and bad things on them, but they are something that gr grows outside. Uh, hop water is, is not a good, uh, it's not a hostile environment the way that beer is. Everybody knows why people drink beer for civilizations. They couldn't trust the water, but you could always trust the beer. But hop water kind of, you know, closes down those protections. And you do hear about um, some issues with like, you know, coliforms and things, you know, no botulism, nothing like crazy, uh, but it, hygiene is very important. Yeah, certainly, you hops. know, if you, you wouldn't want to make uh, a hop water if you um, had diarrhea or were vomiting violently. <laughs> <laughs> you might don't be usually a, want to do much when you might be a pass talking. on the brew day on yeah. that. <laughs> it's another another reason we add the acid. If you can get your pH below four, ideally around three point eight, that's considered food safe. That pH, you're gonna kill almost anything that can harm you, um, bacteria wise. And so, not only do we keep the bitterness lower for just pleasure of drinking, but you keep it safe by dropping that pH. So you boil, you add the acid. You're gonna you're gonna keep things nice and clean and safe. Yeah, yeah. it's a great point. Like, cause you know when we're making beer, you know, yeah, say we're five two going into the kettle, right? And then after fermentation, we're like four eight. But there's something else there. There's alcohol yeah, present, exactly. right? So like yep. you were talking about beer safe, where you, so the, yeah, nothing could flourish in there. But since we don't have the alcohol, we pre-acidify to, to drop that pH, create a hostile environment to mm -hmm. you know, drive off or thwart any uh, bacteria. Where a home brewer can really go nuts is, you know, you don't have to add a food grade acid. Uh, but we're we're recommending it from a food safety perspective. Obviously, that's going to bring a certain, you know, uh, I mean, it's acid is acidic, right? So maybe that it changes, the, well. it changes yeah. the flavor. And each acid brings over certain um, characteristics with it. So you don't have to be married to, you know, lactic because lactic is the the you know the the German purity law way, uh, especially if you manufacture it yourself. Um, you could go FOSS, getting that more like soda pop snappiness. You could go to Malik, which I always, whenever I think of Malik, I think of Warheads. You know, you could go to uh, Citric. Citric, right? That, then you're getting more into... Or you could just use lemon juice. Lemon juice. Uh, you could do uh, Tartaric, right? E each one. Um, and to, to, to say that we've explored all of those, you know, I'd, I'd be lying. So that... That's a, a nice to do for the ambitious. But if you look at some different flavors, see which one you like. Acid yeah. acid can be a fun thing to play with. I mean, just like you can get you acid. Yeah. 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 <laughs> just talk I mean, to the Grateful Dead. Just, you know, I mean, yes, yeah, certainly. Let's, yes. Um, There's a few posters in here that agree with you. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of black light posters. In but here. you can you can you can create your own blends. You know, malic, tartaric, different proportions, just like a wine blend and winemakers and, yeah. love acid. I mean, that's like. The whole thing of you know the, the 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 structure of the wine and but let's not talk about wine any more than that. <laughs> but but certainly you can uh, if you I mean really the point is to make a beverage that tastes good. Yeah. Whatever route you go, you know, uh, that's why it should you know if you want to add stuff in the back, go for it. It's basically a soda pop at that stage. So going back to okay, the boil and calculating our IBUs, we had a conversation about that. There's no, there's no sugar present, right? So that affects uh, our, our BU calculation. Um, so we're targeting 10 IBUs. Again, is that, that's because of the, the, steriliz or not, or the antibacterial properties of the 10 IBUs right around there? Just a little extra protection. Yeah, a little extra protection. Yeah. How would, for like a home brewer then, I think the most software out there will allow them to calculate. Uh, from my experience, it's it's really hard to just kind of guess what your IBU is going to be. It's really we have a we have a lab that can kind of confirm that. So it's just as long as it's in the ballpark. In, in ball. my experience, it's it's usually a little higher than whatever it comes out on that. So let's talk hops then, since we're talking about hops and bitterness. Uh, today we use Nectaron, 
which I freaking love. Um, what are good hops for for hop water? Um, you know, I guess that's kind of a, a flavor thing, right? But what, what would you guys recommend, or what are some ones you all think the would be cool? all the sea hops? So Citra, um, Cascade, Centennial. Of course, yep, yep. Uh, you know, all the all the hot uh, uh, private varietals are also a good route. You know, be careful with uh, Sabro as every good brewer is. Well, it's too much coconut lime could be no, a No, certainly I think that would be less of a risk than, uh, you know, Summit or something. Something that's got uh, <laughs> yeah. thiols, uh, like, a, like a Columbus. Strata would be good. Strata, I don't know, soft Strata's stuff. nice. Yeah. yeah, something, you know, it really is just, it's the same hops that you understand and know what they do to your beers. Uh, and we all know that the hops will express differently in a hazy versus a non-hazy. And, and uh, you know, New England style hop water is definitely coming, if not already there. Uh, but we're going for more of a, a West Coast, right? So uh, kind of a clean, slightly grapefruit, pine. So all those varieties that, you know, do that. Uh, Simcoe, you know, Mosaic, Citra. I would say it's going to depend on how you use it as well where you put it in, if it's going in the boil or if it's going in on the backside. When we first developed Hoppy Refresher years ago, we tried a bunch of different hops and it's surprisingly, some of them were really not good. Some we of them single, don't work. Single hop Which, what, what are some of the ones that weren't good? Uh, uh, you cannot, I remember. I think you cannot yeah. was pretty bad. Yeah. But it was something that we really, really like in beer. Just yeah. yeah, I love that one. Don't always necessarily translate. So it's, it's a fun thing to play with and trial with your process to figure out which ones work particularly well for the flavor you want. Yeah. And yeah. we also noticed that like they would express differently that if you were to like have the hops completely purged mm -hmm. uh, before, before uh, you know, having water. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, you can get different flavors like we did today with the dip hop. Uh, that yeah, let's talk about that a little yeah. bit. So that was something. So we did the the whirlpool hops or boil hops, right? And, and, and uh, then we transferred over to the fermenter. And then we did the dip hop. So tell me a little bit about dip hopping. And yeah, I mean, it's basically uh, something that's out there that that people have come up with. You know, not a lot of new things. It checks a nice food safety box though, because yeah. you're the the first thing you're doing is you're mixing the hops with some. Uh, Hot water. hot water yeah so that's uh kind of so a, over so we had like 175 ish yeah, 180 water. degree water yeah. it's probably gonna strike it's if you will kind of yeah like what what is the old rule uh, uh 160 for 15 20 minutes or whatever you know but they they i mean people get pretty deep into it like uh today we basically just uh did it really quickly and and put the slurry in uh, but uh, they say, you know, a, uh, an hour, hour and a half before you knock out, you want to hydrate. Uh, uh, and, and what that does is it drives off. Myrcene is the most volatile. And certainly we love myrcene, so it seems a little silly to like, why would you want to drive we, that we, off? We want to keep our myrcene because we associate myrcene as the, the uh, f like fresh hop character. But then you can, you can also get into your more delicate water soluble like your your geraniol and your there's uh, lots of, there's lots mm -hmm. of grassy kind of uh, harsh flavors that can get driven off with that hop dip and you get really kind of a nice pure uh, uh, kettle hop kind of uh, experience with a little bit with a little butter juiciness that you would get from a dry hop and again it's for a home brewer that that's that's really kind of a stability you know it's probably a good idea you know yeah, shelf life down. So, so another thing we added was we added some yeast, right? Um, yep. Even though we have no real sugar per se present, maybe a little bit from the hops, uh, but um, so what are we doing there? Yeah, certainly, I mean, that's why you would see, you know, in our uh, labels, we would say brewers, uh, brewers, nutritional brewers yeast or whatever. Uh, it, we did notice that there there's a difference between uh, hop water and with yeast. and without. Uh, Whether or not you believe in the, the what is it, the, the brand bio transformation, bio tra the, the beta glucosidases or not, their hops have sugars, to your point. Mm -hmm. And the belief is that uh, terpenes are munched on by yeast, a yeast being a bag of enzymes, I like to quote <laughs> Dr. Michael Lewis on that. It's very uh, unglorious, but also very true. A yeast is a bag of enzymes. And those uh, enzymes in there are, are working on the hops, or so the thought goes. You're either a 
biotransformation camp yes or camp not? It's very binary. But, uh, but we did uh, uh, just like that little vessel that we used um, to do the other weird yeah. process. Yeah. Yeah. So talk, talk through it again real quick. Like, what did we, what did we do there? I saw an Austrian yeah. brewer yeah. Uh, do that so it's technique. an Austrian hop blast it, is it, what we'll it, call it. It was a way <laughs> to add a hop aroma when your beer was finished, but you just felt it needed something, but you didn't want to tip in oils or anything because those have that real just unidimensional I added oil and I can't live with myself kind of thing. So it was like a cool workaround that uh, I saw a guy do that in Austria and was like, that's bitching. It was similar to the hop dip, a yeah. uh, smaller vessel, something that you could do in a, in a, a, a corny. Uh, basically we put just uh, not even half a pound of hops, mm -hmm. uh, hot water similar to the hop dip. Big headspace. Uh, we drew, drove out a little bit of the first uh, 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 the a bit of the headspace, and then uh, basically we're going into a carb stone, repa replacing the headspace in the tank that has the regular oxygen with the scented uh, Tur terp infused CO2. Yeah, yeah. I like that. that terp was infused a cool uh, CO2. Yeah. AKA the Austrian blast. The Austrian blast. <laughs> you heard it here first. Don't look it up on Urban Dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that might be up there with the, yes. We were able to do small trials, uh, which is always yeah. a good idea. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah. And different of those vessels, some with yeast, some without different hop you can, it's yeah. I mean, you, you can taste through all of them and say, okay, we like what this tastes like, but not that one. Yeah. And, then, and then blend the best ones. And some of it, some of that, what what would happen would, is the same kind of grassy, kind of harsh flavors. Yeah. You'd get less of them. Yeah. Yeah. It, it always, it the always sucks when the end result is just like, it, it smells like, you know, the hop storage Pails. compartment of some sort of brewery. Like uh, yeah. you, you just, you just got generic, all the hop, you know, you want to have the special nuances. You want to carve out those, like we call them the miners. So the, the, the little, terpenes and the relationship of some terpenes to another that's what makes the varietal special you want to capture those you know as, as best as you can and of course you're going to do that best by doing a wet hop uh hop water but obviously it's uh it's february right now and we would need to be in new zealand for australia which uh yeah, you guys got a budget for that that's sounding pretty cool <laughs> maybe next year yeah 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 i do know I've never been. I, I do know someone from does who did one of those though oh uh, with the mr bergman, bergman. Yeah. yeah was that bergman yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. it was a mutual yeah. friend of ours yeah, 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 yeah. those uh, home, home home brewers yeah 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 he had, yeah, he had some uh, i think we we gave him they were the hops that, that we had from harvest we gave him okay. yeah and it turned out it turned out good yeah. got some great ways to make hop water. We talked about that. Uh, I want to talk a little innovation. So we, we did this today in the innovation lab. You guys have a whole lab or a brew house dedicated to innovation. You guys were ahead of the curve on the hop water and, and the high five like we talked about. What do you feel the next trend is? You know, where are we going uh, in, in regards to innovation? Um, and then also, I do want to talk about the health aspect. I love of that. Like we were talking earlier yeah. about, you know, we're everybody, getting older. Everybody mm -hmm. thinks we drink a lot of beer, but we're getting older. And, yeah. and you know, like stuff like this is attractive to me. Um, so kind of a two part question, but like, let's talk about innovation and, and, and health too, because I think it's important to talk about that. Yeah. Uh, well, of course we live in a time where it feels like everybody's doing everything. The, the great convergence, if you gave it, give it a name. So the big blurring between, you know, Bev Auk and, and not, and like the big soda companies, you know, Pepsi and Coca-Cola monster. Everybody's jumping in, mixing everything. You know, you watched Boston beer company become Boston beverage company and you know, the rise and fall of seltzers. And it's, it's, you know, really hard to say. I, the only comforting thing that rattles around in my brain was said by a, a wise hop farmer, uh, uh, whose name is Steve Peralt. And I asked him if, if he, if he felt, uh, uh, threatened by a, a beverage like a seltzer. This is at a time when seltzers appeared unstoppable three years ago in summer. And, um, and, and he said, I think people, because you know, seltzer no, uses no hops and uses no malt. It's literally like 
it anti- should be a crime, <laughs> anti-beer. But he said, I think people that like beer will just drink beer. And every time the going gets tough, as we watch our industry just flounder and do everything and, and just do, do things that were unthinkable five, 10 years ago, I just hear Steve Peralt's comment in my head, people that like beer will just drink beer. And then I, I meditate and I feel better. That's awesome. I'm glad you said that because I was having a conversation with, with someone in the industry the other day and we were talking about like seltzers and that, and, you know, hazy IPAs to somewhat, you know, and and the whole vibe was like anything we do to, to drive people away from beer is bad for us. I've always been of the impre- impression or, or mind thought of like make something and make it good and put passion into it and and you know like seltzers are cool you know it's like you know it's like making mead there's well, you, you, there's no uh uh nutrients in there so what are the, the seltzer science. what are the seltzer companies doing right now and putting all their bets on vodka versions of what they they just took something that's categorized as beer and like red herring the whole bunch of bud light drinkers and hoodwinked them away from beer and into spirits because now all the big seltzer guys, their big bet for the future is vodka versions of what they made before from sugar. So to me, that did beer a disservice. Yeah, definitely. I, I feel like it wasn't until I had that conversation that I'm like, man, there maybe there is something there. We are driving people away and you know, will they come back? I love your comment of like, beer drinkers are always be beer drinkers. Yep. And, and I believe that as well. Yep. Yeah, we went from the, you know, 10, 15 years ago, we were still, as brewers, we were still champions of, uh, you know, hundreds of years of history and and telling the consumer what's good. Uh, That's back when there was, you know, a lot less breweries. Now there's so many breweries, the, the, the pie is not any bigger, just more slices. Same number of drinkers, if not less. So, yeah. Brewery count keeps going up, it's less piece for pieces for everybody so we are you know we are reactive to what the consumers want and part of that's what part of the innovation lab is to be able to 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 draw from that but also you know come with our with our newer ideas but the idea is that we'll come up with rough sketch ideas and be able to to put them into a form that will translate into the larger brewery. Uh, we showed you earlier that our previous pilot brew house was an 80 barrel brew house, mm-hmm. which is just you know 160 kegs. It's a lot of kegs. Uh, so um, this will be you know this uh, eight, eight barrel brew house. Maybe it's too small. 16 but. <laughs> kegs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but but before that, I was uh, called the wort thief. You know, for the last uh, seven years. I was uh, creating new beers, using alternative yeast, alternative hops, but pulling from the, the wort stream uh, that was uh, you know, knocking out every day. So everything I made was either a modified you know, little something or if I wanted it blonde or, you know, uh, you know yeah. And different beers if I, you know, so. So what do you guys have, like where do you see the future in the innovation lab, if you guys could even share it with me? Oh, like, we don't. We don't yeah. know the future. Yeah, yeah. where, where so if I, I did, like, I wouldn't tell you that. Old IPA, right? Yeah. Like it's it, it's really impossible. Uh, it to feels like, like IPAs are, they're here to stay, but they're also maybe at fever pitch. I mean, you know, you one of your questions is going to be desert island style. Yeah. For me, I I definitely prefer. I like West Coast IPAs. I could drink those till the day I die. Um, but you know, you mentioned health and wellness, so uh, you know, a trend towards more functional. And you see a lot of like token functional where they take every buzzword, like Mark would joke, Ashwagandha. You know, we made an Ashwagandha with enough in it to really be in it. And we were like, people might not like that taste, (laughs) right? So people would just put a flake of it in there just to put it on the, the label, you know, new, new tropics or yeah. what is the other buzzword? Uh, adaptogens. Adaptogens. Like this stuff is Part, really yeah. dumb. Part of it's pure marketing, but if you could actually do it and have it be, be real, right? I think there could be an interest for that. I also feel that home brewers who have been brewing, you know, double IPAs their whole life and now they're clocking over into their forties, the guys like us, they might be interested in, in you know, because every, everything always kind of starts out, you know, in your kitchen. You know, that's where we started out. Well, yeah, I mean, there's 
just just like the 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 like I was saying, we used to tell people, you know, what was good. I, I the, the homebrew community is keeping that alive, keeping yeah. the styles alive, keeping innovation alive. I mean, really, you know, that it's a it's a re relief to see that there's still home brewers because you know <laughs> brewers have lost their way we we <laughs> well, <laughs> we're, we're re, again we're reactive we're reactive yeah. but we're also you know fully aware that yeah. just because you make good good beer doesn't mean it sells it's yeah, like I know. marketing I know. is very is very cutthroat out there i mean it's so. like just just adding you know fruit to everything like um, imagine the the 2010 version of ourselves you know that would just make us shudder yo yeah we would say oh we we would never use natural flavor why would you use that we we'll just cut up all the the tangerines we want what was it <laughs> before that it was it was eat the fruit oh yeah smoke the weed drink the beer and then now all that's gone out the window you can throw you can you can drink the weed oh uh, uh, yeah you know get your cert yeah it's uh the great convergence you know even with like kombucha and you know we make a we make a, a kind of a rainforest tea now. Um, yeah, we've made. Brewers yeah. have to get creative to to engage the consumer. <laughs> so it's a good point you said with like the home brewers too. Like they don't have to sell the beer, so they can experiment and do whatever the heck they want. That's they the are thing, their right? own customer. Yeah. Which you know we unfortunately might be before we would brew, we we thought that what we liked was like what other people would like, <laughs> and then now you know you we get reminded like. Well, maybe that's not true anymore. Well, yeah, you come and that's sad. yeah, because brewers are like, oh, I want to do like a smoked porter or something, you know, and then it sits in the warehouse for eight yeah. months. Oh yeah, an <laughs> amber, an amber so, ale. Like, so brewer, you brewer led innovation starts opening a brewery and doing a red ale, a porter, you know. Uh, Sounds uh, like when I started drinking. That was exactly like yeah. these. These were. But there, there, there are people we that want love, those beers. We would I love to, to see do more red ale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We'd love yeah. to. We'd love to brew different styles and do all that kind of stuff. You know? I think. I think that makes our job to to listen to the consumer, make it better, and guide them back. And that's it's incredibly hard to do. If I knew how to do that better, yeah, I'd probably be somewhere else sitting on a tropical island. <laughs> but if if you can listen to the consumer and they might say something really just crazy, and say. Okay, is there a seed there? And then yeah. we take that and we we work our magic and say, here's your idea, but here's how we make it. And I think, but people also appreciate authenticity. You know, you can you've we've definitely all had the the like, whoa, like look at this crazy can with these crazy oh, yeah. ingredients, and then you're like, this just, that just tastes like marketing. You know, it yeah. tastes, <laughs> like, tastes like tastes like marketing. It tastes <laughs> like the marketing department. Like you know, no one wants to drink the marketing department. Yeah. They would prefer to drink the, the grumpy brewer's department. <laughs> so going back to the, the health and wellness, because uh, we're doing, you know, we're talking hot water today, but I had a killer non-alcoholic beer uh, oh, yeah. on tap earlier, um, which yep. is, is great. And as I get older, you know, the things like, like pale ale is kind of one of my favorite styles because lower ABV, but there's the hops there. But like the non-alcoholic, how do, is that selling good for you guys? Is there, a, is there a market there as well? It's the fastest growing, but on a very small base. And uh, you have to imagine that that eventually the United States will begin to resemble a more established Western culture, so more like Europe, where you know non 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 alcoholic beer is is everywhere. It's very well developed. Uh, drinking and driving laws are, are more strict. Um, the the limits are lower. You know, we've been steadily kind of lowering ours, and you, you, health and wellness. You know, the ability, uh, also spacers, right? Um, I used to think that a, a session IPA was a spacer, you know? So if you're gonna drink a Maximus, you better have a daytime afterwards or it's gonna be nighttime for you. Um, but now you can go, you know, daytime uh, IPNA or the Nano Juicy that you had, uh, which these are about, um, you know, 0.4. So, you know, they're perfect for, you know, Gonna, gonna have to drive later. Or, or my favorite thing to do when I go visit my buddies in the East Bay is I'll, I'll, I'll do half and half, half IPA, half IPNA, and then I have a nice, uh, you know, three percent beer. A little three percent. Yeah, you know, three percent beer. Yeah, we always thought table <laughs> beers, so, so called, were gonna take off, but it's that that's that weird alcohol percentage right in the middle, like between two and 
Three and a half. Nobody that, wants to buy that. Nobody wants that. Yeah. And right now. Them, yeah, I guess the general public. Yeah. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction, said, uh, was that Newton? And it's like, all right, NA is the fastest growing category. So that's like, you know, nearly nothing. And all of a sudden, bam, doubles. super high octane yeah. is also. Triple doubles or yeah, yeah. triples and doubles, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's a yeah. uh, younger season right now, you know. So. I remember, I mean, when you talk about what, you know, what you said, like, what's your favorite beer? A little something has always been the my beer that I just, just drink the shit out of. Like, you know, I'll start drinking it at 11 a.m. on, you know, if I'm camping or something. It's my, that's my daytime. Yeah, daytime <laughs> at 7, yeah. 7. Uh, but, then, but then when we came out with daytime, I was like, it was kind of like, it was like uh, frustrating. It was, it was kind of. I just kind of had to drink it twice as fast, <laughs> so, so that's that's my take on session beers. At least is is I drink them twice as fast, personally. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, thanks for having us out. It was an amazing day. Uh, thanks for showing us around the facility. Uh, looking forward to coming back and trying this hop water when it's ready. So thanks again. Cheers. 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 Empty. Oh, we yeah. can't cheers with empty glasses. Yeah, <laughs> Bad luck. <laughs> <laughs>